Technical objections to Jesus' lack of formal training and ordination are, in the end, irrelevant. His contemporaries, including those who objected to his rabbinical status on technical grounds, universally accepted him as a rabbi. For all intents and purposes, Jesus was a rabbi. Besides, as we shall see, Jesus did receive a rabbinical ordination of a type transmitting authority passed down from the first rabbi, Moses. Like his education, Jesus' ordination transcended the norms of strict rabbinical requirements, while at the same time satisfying the substance of those requirements. We know from the Savior's own lips that the status of a rabbi was such that if one were not careful, it would corrupt the soul. He warned his disciples not to be like the Pharisees and scribes, who loved the pomp and circumstance and public adulation that came with the position. He cautioned his disciples to reject the title of rabbi and master. At the same time, however, he claimed it as his own. Like money, the title rabbi was not intrinsically immoral. It was the love of the title that was the root of the evil. Furthermore, Jesus taught his disciples that the title and position demanded respect. He instructed his disciples to obey the rabbis, in spite of their unworthiness for their exalted status. Moses was considered the first rabbi, and sitting in his seat simply meant that one had the authority of a rabbi passed down from the original rabbi himself. Jesus wanted his disciples to respect the office while rejecting the behavior of those who held it. To earn the title of rabbi today, one must be ordained. The ordination is called semicha, which means the laying on of hands. Semicha is based upon the example of Moses when he passed authority to his successor Joshua by the laying on of hands. Moses also selected 70 elders to serve with him. The Spirit of the Lord fell upon the 70 who prophesied without ceasing. Tradition traces the authority of rabbis through a chain of ordinations back to the 70 and to Moses himself. As far as we know, Jesus did not receive the ordination of Semicha under the hands of titled rabbis. This does not mean, however, that he did not receive the presumed authority requisite for a rabbi. The Synoptic Gospels record that Jesus met with Moses and Elijah on a high mountain, where he became transfigured. Though what happened upon the mount is not explicitly recorded, it is more than likely that Moses gave Jesus priesthood authority. We know he gave Joseph Smith priesthood keys in the Kirtland Temple in our dispensation. As on the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah also attended Moses in Kirtland and likewise gave priesthood authority to Joseph, specifically the keys of the fullness of the priesthood. As the head of his dispensation, Jesus received the keys of the dispensation, just as Joseph Smith did in our day. In each case, Moses gave priesthood keys to the head of the new dispensation. Indeed, if Moses is to be considered the first rabbi, then only Jesus could rightfully claim a direct line of authority to the prophet. Unlike the Pharisees and scribes, who could only claim authority through long and problematic chains of ordinations, Jesus received his authority from Moses himself. <laughs>